Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport. Today I got a special guest, Steve Voss, and he's a very interesting San Diego guy, and he is attending the 2023 Cannonball this year. So, Steve, what what motivated you to want to be do this to crazy do craziness <laughs> of going across the country on a scooter? Yeah, it is crazy. You know, after I got my scooter a couple of years ago. I thought, you know, I'd love to do a long trip and hit some of the places where I've lived in my life and where I went to high school and all that stuff. And it would, would have been from the Northeast out here. And then I discovered the Cannonball, I think it was on Modern Vespa or something like that. And I thought, that's it. And it just so happened that it's starting, what, 55 miles up the road, I was hooked. So pretty much, Steve, he bought a uh, 2022, 21? 21. 21, he got a impulsive orange GTS 300. You know that's my favorite color because I painted a scooter before that color ever came out. And I don't know, you know, when you buy something that's called impulsive orange in <laughs> Italian, it makes you do impulsive things like do the cannonball, so. But it's not feeling so impulsive right now because all the prep that's involved, you know, I've been down here a couple times uh -huh. making sure that it's ready and no better place to come to get it ready. And then the stuff you decide you have to buy and then there's the stuff you wanna buy. It's just a hoot. So impulsive at the beginning to get hooked, but then there's all the gotta do's and wanna do's and yeah, the there it is. Pretty much the reality strikes because I've even been following the uh, Cannonball uh, form. There's like a form for other riders that are attending the Cannonball. I think it was at 250 is the maximum attendance but there's some people dropping out which you figure and i was like wow that's there's like i think i saw about 10 people in the last week to just announce they're dropping out at the last minute and they had excuses but i think they just weren't prepared for it sometimes ultimate, life so. gets in the way i mean when that's you start true. to think about the time that you've got to take off to prep and mm -hmm. to do the ride and to get home and you know the expense uh, but still the adventure it's worth it. We're going to have, I think, 150 plus riders uh, at the start. Imagine that. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. I've, I, the Cannonball has never been this large. I mean, what was it? Ten, ten years ago when we hosted the, where it ended in San Diego, what was that 2013? I'm kind of, mine's a little uh, rusty on this, that, that Cannonball. But I don't know, it just seemed like a, you know, a couple of handfuls worth of scooters that arrive at our shop and we had a little party and now there's just this, this motivation I've never seen for the scooter Cannonball, even though it's been around for quite a long time. Yeah, I think this is the 10th running, if I'm not mistaken, and this one's a little bit different. The, my understanding is the last one was pretty tough with a lot of dirt uh -huh. and it was a long route. This one is pretty reasonable, almost all on pavement, though if, if you don't know about the Cannonball, it's all back roads, we don't do highways. Uh, and it's pretty reasonable distance over the eight days, I think 3,170 miles, Yeah. if you don't make any wrong turns. Yeah, exactly, no wrong turns, hit all the check checkpoints, you know, so much more to it than what, you know, the word cannonball, it's not not the cannonball that starts in um, the, the, I don't know, the long time running car one, where it is kind of just evading police and all that other fun stuff. It's, yeah, it's they, a very different format. They go to great pains, uh, the organizers of this Cannonball, uh, who do a remarkable job, but they go to great pains to make sure people understand it's it's not a race, you know, it's a timed endurance and navigation challenge. But there are some people that come definitely to race. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, and just like any sports, it's, it's a combination of skill sets and uh, mental abilities, there's so much to it, more than just mindlessly pointing your scooter in a certain direction and uh, holding the throttle wide open, I can tell you that, so. Yeah, and th this year we're gonna face, it, on the first day alone, I think uh, our first overnight is at Lake Havasu, Arizona, and right now they're saying it's gonna be about 105 degrees uh, that afternoon. So uh, that may weed a few people out. Uh -huh. it's, it's gonna be a little bit toasty and the pool might be full by the time uh, we all get there. So, From yeah. Lake Havasu, we go to Winslow, Arizona, mm -hmm. where there'll be a whole lot of people standing on the corner in Winslow, Arizona. Uh, the next day we get some elevation up to uh, 
just beyond Flagstaff uh, into, or I'm sorry, Winslow is beyond Flagstaff. The next day we go to Los Alamos with mm -hmm. some serious elevation, about 9,000 feet above sea level. It'll be a little chilly that night. Then we get up to a day in Oklahoma, from Gaiman, Oklahoma to Miami, Oklahoma, 450 miles almost straight across the state from the Panhandle to the, the eastern reaches. reaches. That's, that's going to be some day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. That and case, after so. Miami, Oklahoma, we start dropping south to uh, Blytheville, Arkansas, and then Rome, Georgia, and then on into uh, Hilton Head mm -hmm. uh, for the finish. Uh, so you're right, we're going to hit microclimates and we're going to hit thunderstorms and it, pretty much everything the, the weather can throw at you in the summertime in the United States, we're going to see it. Yep, and ho hopefully no extreme weather, you know, get a hurricane in there. They've, no, no. they've <laughs> had that in the yeah. past. You so, know, you just, there's no talent. Yep, pretty much. So some of the stuff I did to Steve Voss's scooter, well, I didn't do it. Uh, my staff is, they pretty much brought the scooter 100% up the service, so it's got a fresh dry belt, a fresh pair of tires. He's got a extra set of tires on rims. Uh, I kind of hooked him up with like a spare rim that we had kicking around the shop and said, well, why just bring a tire with you? It just, <laughs> you know, it could be a, a total ordeal trying to mount a tire, or finding some little shop to do that. So. Um, Hooked them up with those kind of spares just to set them up for success. And I hate to say it, starting with a new scooter that's like broken in, uh, you're kind of setting yourself up for success there because it's kind of at the peak of where it's the least likely to fail. Don't sure. jinx me though. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> He's saying I'm in the sweet spot with yeah. my scooter. And but some of the scooters people bring, I'm like, oh boy, you know, I'm like, wow, you're, you're, just, you're just gambling. Yeah, yeah so. there's one you guys worked on, a guy from Canada. Uh -huh. I think One Way is his uh, scooter cannibal name, and that's old. Yeah, but. it's got some miles behind it, and he's got some experience, so uh, hopefully no mechanical breakdowns for him, but... The funny thing is, when I talk to people about the cannonball, they say, so you're going from where to where? And I tell them, they say, and you're going on a Vespa? Mm -hmm. And people have this thought that a Vespa only goes, you know, 30 miles an hour. So when I tell them, no, I go 75 on the highways, you know, they're like, wow, really? A Vespa? It's so much fun. Yeah, I've, I've always had fun. I've had people criticize me like, I can't believe you're going all the way up the coast on a Vespa or you're going really far in Mexico. And they ask, and I, I always like the humble people. I said, every year <coughs> there's people that ride bicycles or they walk that far. They walk. There's people that have that much time on, they'll just, yeah. Just walk to South America. So it's like, uh, you know, you got to humble yourself sometimes. You know? Well, it, it, you so. know, the other thing about the cannonball, besides the challenge of riding across the country on something with, you know, wheels the size of a dinner plate, <laughs> you know, the fact that you get to see a part of America that's normally flyover country, mm. uh, pretty amazing. We're, we're going to see just really small town America. Uh, and get to meet people and be ambassadors really for the scooter community. That's going to be a blast. Yeah, that's what I've, I've always heard. There's been a lot of camaraderie, like people that, you know, in some small town America towns that have Vespas, they get word on the internet that they're coming through, and there's a lot of excitement for, I don't know, fans of the Cannonball along the whole entire route. Bring beer. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so I was. I kind of asked your history about motorcycles, and it sounds like the the classic American story <laughs> started on a Honda 90. Actually, a mini bike before that, a little Honda mini bike, then a Honda Trail 90, bright yellow. You know, it had the uh, the sprocket that you could change in the back if you were really going off road. It was a blast. Uh, went from that to a beat up Triumph 250. Uh, from that to a Yamaha 650 Maxim. Uh, right there in the 80s, somewhere in that range. Yeah, yeah. exactly correct. And then uh, a Harley Nostalgia model, which was great fun. Uh, and then a Triumph Bonneville 650. Uh, but I swear to goodness, the first time I got on a, well, the first time I got on a Vespa was the Canary Islands. Rode off the coast of Africa, all around the Canary Islands. It was great. But when I came back to Vespa a few years ago, getting ready to buy one, 
I still remember the first day getting on it thinking, wow. And you just smile when you get on. And anybody watching this knows, I mean, I'm preaching to the choir. There's just something about this way of getting around that's unmatched. No, I completely agree. And I have motorcycle head friends that know I have big motorcycles and, and I still prefer to do some serious long trips on my Vespas. You know, I've traveled Mexico, the Southwest, not quite a, a cross country trip, but there's been other parts of the world that I've traveled uh, with other people. I haven't traveled to on a Vespa, but um, I've, people have been generous enough to let me borrow scooters in Italy and Germany. And it's, I don't know, I just, they're so much more easy going and the use of Vespa, yeah, it's, you're not gonna get on an Autobahn and, and <laughs> test the speed limit of a sport bike, but that's, a lot of times that's not the point, you know. Well, and I think too, the Vespas are a whole lot less intimidating, you know, mechanically mm -hmm. than the big bikes I've had. And, and your videos on YouTube and stuff, what a great resource that is. I've, I've watched you so many damn times, I'm tired, yeah. tired of seeing your face. <laughs> but you can educate yourself and do a lot of the stuff. You know, I've heard on the Cannonball, there's as much fun wrenching in the parking lots as there is riding the route. So I, I think that's something unique about scooters that uh, just grabs people and doesn't let them go. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. You know, some of the trips I've done, we've had failures within our group. and. Um, to me, that's half the adventure a lot of times. I, again, I hope he hasn't jinxed me for the cannonball. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have you on speed dial. Yeah, there you go. That's, it's not the first time yeah. that I've had uh, cannonball attendees have me on speed next dial. Day, next day parts. And next day parts. We're used to that here at Scooter West. So. You bet. So Steve here, the way I first met him is, uh, well, of course, he was talking to sales manager, TC. He probably watched my videos and kind of when he, he embraced on, he wanted to get a new Vespa. But the nickname around here is he's the mayor of Poway. So Poway is a suburb that's, I don't know, what is that about? 15 miles uh, northeast of San Diego. Yeah, we, we actually there. sit right on the edge of the city of San Diego. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we're a city of uh, 50,000 people, known as the city in the country, and uh, pretty good little town. Yeah, I've, I've always liked Poway. It's, it's kind of far away from the freeway and its own little city. They got very nice houses. There's ranches up in the hills. Uh, there's like wonderful hiking because I'm like an outdoors guy. So you go to Iron Mountain and some other um, Mount Woodson or whatever it is up yep. there. So potato chip rock. Yep. Yeah. So there's I've, I've always enjoyed Poway. I mean, actually, when I was still in high school, uh, my parents were looking at houses in Poway, but we ultimately ended up going near the coast in Encinitas, which is another suburb of San Diego. So but um, how long have you been the mayor of Poway? Uh, I am in my third term okay. as mayor, and if you had told me 15 years ago I was going to be mayor of Poway, I would have said you're smoking your breakfast or something, because it, it was not on my radar. I spent all of my career in the music business, but I got involved civically in the city and just kind of got hooked and first was a council member for two years and then uh, ran for mayor and somehow they elected me. Well, th thanks for coming down to visit one week away. Um, so pretty much if you're watching this video, it's uh, the cannonballs already probably started. Um, yes, yeah, say a prayer for all of us. It's, it's a long ride, but yeah, it's so. going to be great fun. And thank you to your team here for you know, helping not only myself, but I know a lot of the riders come here and rely on you all for parts and for service and all that stuff. And it's nice when you feel like you can lean on people that know what they're doing and care about what they're doing. So thank you. Yeah, no problem. I'm, I don't know, I'm pretty passionate about scooters and I'd love to share that passion with everybody. So. There you go. See you after the cannonball. All right, sounds good.